Okay, this is the uh, TCAP practice test for grade 8 math. This is question number 61. It's a probability question. Two number cubes, each with faces numbered 1 through 6. So I've got cubes that could give me 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. It's like this thing. A number cube is like another term for dice, which would be 2 and a die as one of them. But you can't say that in a, a statewide math test because dice can be used for gambling. <gasps> It's not like we don't have a lottery. Anyway, these are my possible roles for my first die. First. These are my possible roles for my second die. So we're assuming they are regular die or number cubes, whatever. The question asks, what is the probability that at least one of those cubes will end on six? Now, if you've been watching any of the videos that I've been doing previously about this, probability makes me think of two things. Number one, a total. And number two, a fraction. at least one fraction, sometimes more. In this case, we're doing one thing. We're rolling two die at a time. So it's not like I roll one and then I roll a second one. I'm rolling both of them at the same time. So this is one event, so I need one fraction. The fraction that I set up for probability has the total number of outcomes on the bottom and the number of preferred outcomes on top. Or in this case, uh, chances or uh, situations in which one of the cubes lands on six. So in order to find the total, I need to figure out how many possible ways that those two die can roll out answers. Like one of them could be 1-1, one, one, and then I have 1-2, and then I have 1-3, and then I have 1-4, and then I have 1-5, and then I have 1-6. There alone is six possible combinations. And then I do uh, 2 times 1, 2 times 2, 2 times 3, uh, 2 times 4, 2 times 5, 2 times 6. So I get 6 possibilities if I roll the first die being 1. I get two, 6 possibilities if the first die rolls a 2. I get 6 possibilities if the die rolls a 3. Because it could be 3, 1, 3, 2, 3, 3. I get 6 possibilities when it's 4, 6 when it's 5, and 6 when it's 6. So if I add all these up, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 sixes is 36. That's my total. Now, if you get into a bigger problem that has bigger numbers, all you need to do is take the total number of uh, groups in the first set, so there's six total sides, and multiply by that total number of sides on the second group, which also has six. Six times six is 36. So when I make my factors, or my fractions, sorry, the bottom is going to be 36, because that's the total number of possible outcomes that I could have by throwing those two die at the wall. Now, on top of my fraction, I need to put the preferred, or what I'm looking for, which in this case is one of those cubes at least is rolled a 6. So I'm going to think about the possible outcomes where I get a 6. Well, let's talk about if the left one, so this is the left one, ends up being a 6. So the, the right one can be 1, it could be 2, it could be 3, it could be 4, it could be 5, or it could be 6. Similarly, what if the one on the right is always 6? So I could roll the left one being 1 and the right one being 6. The left could be 2, the left could be 3, the left could be 4, or the left could be 5. All those are possibilities. Now, what about 6-6? Six, six? Do we need to write it down again? No. In this situation, if I have, if I roll them at exactly the same time, and the one on the left is six, and the one on the right is six, there's really no way to tell them apart. So I don't need to have six six written down twice, because it's already covered here. So I'm going to erase it out, and say six six is already covered. I don't need to write anything down twice. But six one, like here, six is on the left. In this case, six is on the right. But if they're both six, you can't tell which is the left or the right, so it doesn't really make any difference. So I'm going to count up all these possibilities. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven possibilities where one of them is at least is six. So I put that eleven on top. Eleven over thirty-six is my answer. So the answer to number sixty-one is C. So if you get one of these, if this happens, or at least one of them is this probability questions, find the probability, uh, find the total number of possibilities by multiplying the highest number of each group together. So in this case, six times six, and then work out in your head or on paper the preferred ones, and then circle your answer. It's not really that difficult. It's just kind of long.